All right, hey, it's Running Man, and uh, today we're talking about part two about uh, the book, The Predatory Female by the Reverend Shannon. And uh, you can see the book down in the link. Uh, go back to part one if you want to catch up on the book. It's a very, very, uh, I would say it's a pertinent, very important work uh, for men. And I think if you read it, it's a very short read too. It's an easy to read book. And you, I guarantee, don't be drinking coffee because you're going to be laughing so hard <laughs> while you're reading it. You know, you're going to like, coffee's going to come out of your nose. So uh, this is like not a, a painful homework for you here. You're going to love it. You're going to love the predatory female. Um, and so we're going to talk today about the structural things that society has in store for you as a man. Like there's, there's one thing is you have like what a particular woman can do to you. So she might be able to outsmart you. She might be able to... Uh, trick you. She might be able to um, uh, make you feel like you can't live without her or whatever the reason is. But there's also much more important is these structural barriers and the way society is kind of set up to be to make it like so that you're stuck in the system. You know, it's 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 it, I want to get more into that, but I just imagine it like a system like like if you get into the criminal justice system, once you get into the system, you know, you're you have a record or whatever, and then you meet the judges. And I don't have a record, so I don't know. But I mean, like I know that once you're in the system, it's very difficult because you're kind of stuck in it. It's easy to get stuck in there and never get out, right? Never get clean again. You know, so the the marriage system, the way everything's set up, the way your assets get taken away from you, uh, the way nobody has any uh, kind of emotion about a guy losing everything, about a guy uh, being tricked into working his whole life for somebody who basically hates him you know like that's there's no sympathy for that at all it's just like all blamed on the guy um, and again we're not talking about right or wrong this is advice for guys so if this strikes home to you if you've seen this uh, then you're gonna love this episode and we're gonna have a we have a couple notes from the last episode so what was what, what were you saying what was it what was the, the last quotes. quote from the last oh, book? Yeah, yeah so okay so I have a really really funny quote from the book and it says it has a translation here so when a woman says one thing it actually means in reality it means another thing and what she says in this case is when she tells you, you are the only one I care about. And then the translation says, you are the best candidate she found thus far to become her lifetime unpaid male butler. If you keep up the good work, she'll enroll you in doggy obedience school. <laughs> Which I find to be extremely true, honestly, in my life. And it's kind of embarrassing. Yeah, you know, this stuff is, uh, part of it is just getting over the embarrassment. That, uh, that, that we all get tricked by this stuff. We yeah. all get... You know, and I, you know, it's like nothing to be embarrassed about. It's just like admitting it, mm -hmm. laughing about it. Think of it as a, yeah. think of it as a 12-step meeting where you're, you know, you, everybody like, uh, you know, like the alcoholics, they go to the meeting and then they all have, they talk and they laugh about the things they did. Oh, I vomited all over my dog. And it's like, <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. You know, I vomited all over my wife, you know, like, you know, the woman's, oh, I vomited all over the policeman, you know, whatever. Everybody's laughing and laughing, right? Because everybody has this shared sympathy, shared experience, right? So yeah. in this one, we all have, we've all gotten, every guy gets got is a statement that I've heard before, and I believe that. Every guy gets got. Uh, so don't be ashamed of it, right? So, yeah, so I, think, I think especially like you mentioned before, like people that do pickup, they tend to think that, they, that they're like uh, better than the, the average guy. So they go into like a relationship where they go into dating women thinking they're the best. They have this ego, they have this image. Then what ends up happening is they fall pretty hard because when they have a problem or something like that, first of all, they don't see it because of their ego. And then they're kind of sensitive, like their women can use their ego to manipulate them and say like, oh, you're the best, you're the best, or blind them. Or like I said in the quote before, you're the only one I care about, right? Well, it has a different meaning. Guys, guys really can fall into this thing so easy. Uh, me it's, too, me too. It's, yeah. it's really like, it's not just one type of guy. We all are susceptible, right? Yeah. What was that other quote? Was there another quote there? Oh, there or? was another one. Uh, quote. Okay, let me, let me see. what. Oh, okay, okay. It's about divorce. It says, as you begin your divorce, it's from the book. As you begin your divorce, understand that your wife is capable of saying or doing anything against you or your children to get what she wants. Right, mm. right. Yeah, and in the book, he says they have five phases, right? And the last phase is the one you see is when you divorce. And I think when once you divorce, I think once she has what she wants, right? Because once she married you, she has part of the property. She has parts of everything. So uh, of everything that you own, I think then she really can expose her true color. And once you divorce, she can basically say whatever she wants. Because if you say that she's bad and she says that you're bad, well, society will listen to her. 
they will side with her. Like if you ima- think about a guy that lost his job, lost everything, then his house and stuff, people are sad about that. But imagine if, if you hear that a woman lost all of her job, her kids and like her money, then it's a real tragedy and people really care about that. Right, right. There, but there's no, not a lot of sympathy for the guys, like, like you said. And I think that's pretty powerful and it's worth thinking about, especially when it comes to divorce and when the cards are on the table and you see what their true colors are and she has no reason to hide it. And I don't want to sound negative. It sounds really negative, but it just it just happened. Like read about people that got divorced, read their, through their experience. Well, a lot of the people on the podcast have been divorced and they know firsthand things can be pretty rough. The, oh, the, okay. It's a common topic that the uh, court system is really biased against guys. And uh, guys just really get the short end of the stick, you know. I've had friends, uh, you know, who had businesses and houses, and you know, like in a recession, they had to sell the business, sell the house, split it in half, and you know, they ended up getting like basically, I don't know, twenty, thirty percent of what their real net worth is because they're selling at the worst time. They would never sell this time of, you know, this this bad season, right? And they would, and selling a company is actually quite difficult. Like, you might have quite a profitable company, but if it's not structured to be sold. It doesn't sell for very much, right? So there's, there's many ways that you can get screwed because it interrupts your life. It interrupts your finances. And so it's even worse than 50%, actually. It can be much worse, right? You know, that's why guys, you know, you hear about people like there was a guy recently who cut everything he owned in half with a chainsaw, you know. So they said they have to give half. So he cut everything in half. He cut his, his iPhone in half. He cut his, really? oh, yeah, his house awesome. in half. He cut his car in half. He had like a, he had like a saw for metal. Yeah. He cut everything in half, you know, and then, and then everybody was saying he was such a bad guy. But I, I can, I can, I, I don't think. I mean, obviously, he didn't listen to this channel. He obviously didn't uh, prepare himself. Awesome. He didn't have the right friends. But, so but I can definitely understand why he would do that because he felt like, what do I have to lose, you know? What happened in the end? Did he just give it? Or like I yeah. think I, I don't think there's much people can do when you, when you destroy all your wealth. The judge can't make you give money you don't have, right? Uh-huh. You know, so I think he probably got away with it, you know. But, of course, he lost all his value, too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so... Oh, so hilarious. Unless he can somehow weld the car back together. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> That'd be epic. <laughs> but, yeah, so, 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 yeah, so, so let's talk about society, like the with structure. You know, we're down here at the park. It's a beautiful day, and uh, we're just kind of watching uh, the families and, and, and the people here. And uh, I was saying, like, if you look, uh, it's like now it's, now it's later. We're kind of getting towards date time when couples are coming, but... Like all day, it's been all women and children, all day. Mostly, yeah. You know, you just sit here and you'll see a guy sleeping under a tree who's maybe a break from work, uh, or you'll see uh, a woman uh, with children, and they're cruising around. Um, and here it is, like a, it's a Monday or no Tuesday, or Tuesday, and uh, you know it's a work day, right? So you don't see a lot of guys in the daytime. You'll start to see more now that the day's over, but uh, you know, you see the basically women. Most women, like, really, honestly, being a housewife is one of the best things you can ever do, right? It's structured to be, like, the easiest job, you know? Like, what do you, what does a housewife do? Like, what, what is that? Like, sitting around, you know, like, watching kids, you know? I know that it's, uh, kids are, like, a handful, I know that. But it's, like, one of these things that, I mean, if anybody doesn't think kids are wonderful, they shouldn't be watching them, you know? Like, I, I, I love kids, and for me, watching kids is like, I, I love it, you know, especially if it was my kid, you know, and uh, I, I'm i like instant uncle, just add water, right? If you come by with a kid, I'm just the uncle right away, right? I love kids, and I, I can spend so much time with kids. I, I understand these women are having a great time. You can see them smiling, and, you know, like, they're just having a good time. You saw them sharing things and picking flowers, and we just kind of sat here for about an hour and a half. We've seen, like... I don't know how many kids, but it's been so many kids and, and, and women uh, here. While you often see, um, you know, guys are guys are work, right? Guys are work. You know, it's like it just just doesn't change. You know, it's like in the movies, it's always changed, right? Like in the movies, it's always fair. It's always even. It's always, and and so that's why I kind of even hate to make a podcast like this because there are exceptions, right? There are exceptions, definitely. Uh, no question about it. And also, it, it's not obvious in real life. Like in, in real, uh, uh, sorry, in movies and stuff, in TV, you know. it's We're being tricked, basically. You know, like in every movie, the girl like kicks ass and she can like kick four guys' ass at the same time. But how many times have you seen that in real life? I've never seen that myself. 
I've never seen a girl, certainly a girl's never kicked my ass. And I've been in several fights, you know, I've never seen that. I've been in big fights, I've seen girls cower, you know, and I've had to fight to get them safe, you know. So even I've seen that, I've done that. You know, it's like the movies are just brainwashing us. So, so, so every time you see like a Rambo movie where the guy's this big Rambo, just go look around. Most guys are totally uh, like pussies, like fat guys at Starbucks. The idea that there's this Rambo out there and there's these girls that they're like, you know, taking control and all this, it just doesn't look around you. Just look at your parents. Just look at, look at real life around you. Like stop living in a dream world. Just start looking. Start really honestly looking. And if you see different things than what I'm saying, I totally would love to hear it because we're not trying to convince anybody of anything. We're looking for the truth on this podcast. So, you know, if you see a unique situation, I'd love to hear it, you know. Yeah, we were talking about it before that um, I was having feeling like some negative feelings toward uh, women in general after uh, reading uh, The Predatory Female. And uh, Roaning Man was saying that it's actually like, don't, don't, like, it's okay to have it, but just understand that it's okay it's just the way they are and not all of them are in specific way or not all of them are just stereotypical and some of them are working some of them like do great things um, and I try really to avoid having a strong opinion and I feel like that's something very important for me and for someone other young people that are listening to this if you're getting negative feelings toward women in general just the way they are you know you don't get angry at someone some animal for acting in certain ways just the way they are yeah yeah and it's the same like with boys like boys like to fight boys like to use guns they use the like G.I. Joe and it just if you watch girls play and good boys play it's very different right you you can't hate either of them for being what they are but they do you know what they naturally do you know so what women do when it comes to children is pretty unique it's pretty you know this is something that's really important for you as a guy to understand and really be ready for because if you don't understand it the jokes on you you know you're gonna be the guy so big like we were talking about this before and I took notes and one of the biggest realization that I had uh, like a year ago even before I read this book is that I looked at all the people that I looked up to I looked at all my role models I looked around in the world I looked at people that create something that I considered personally in my opinion to be amazing I looked at all of that and uh, every time it was made by a man it wasn't made by a woman so my favorite uh, I don't know, uh, the biggest companies I looked up to, the biggest entrepreneurs or the big, the, the people, the coolest people that I looked at were really uh, men, in my opinion, something that I had some struggle seeing at first. I was just, wait, why is it that men create most things around? Like, if you look around you in the world, like, you'll see, like, buildings and you see, like, parks and you'll see, like, the phones and, like, technology. Those those things are almost always hand men made by men. That was kind of really frustrating to me because I'm like, what, well, why is it like that why women aren't this way or are in this way so what, what do you think Roaning Man about this well it's a story that just repeats itself every time uh, you know like with every new technology so if you look at uh, like cars are pretty recent right like 1900s you know and the I think 1905 was the first mass production car so that you know Ford but it was like f- cars were made by men right and then you look at electricity electricity was invented by men like Computers were all invented by men, programming men mostly. Um, you know, uh, mathematics, um, so many, so many. And then, and then you look at something recent like Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley is, is almost 100% created by men. And yeah. our, this is our greatest, I would say, probably society's, you know, like, it's, it's, it's got to be the greatest invention ever, the Internet. More than the printing press. You know, it's definitely more powerful than the printing press. In the beginning, people said that, and they, they didn't think it was true. But now, looking back on, you know, 20 years of the Internet, I mean, or more than 20, it's, it's definitely the most, it's the biggest invention ever. And that was all basically men. And, 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 and at the same time, is like, you do see the rare uh, woman who not only does what a man does, but does it in a very excellent way. You know, you saw, you, there's, there's some scientists uh, that have done uh, great things. Uh, what is her name? Madame Curie or something. I, I, there's so many. Like, I'll, I can make a list of, of, of female uh, inventors and, really? and, and the scientists that, that I really respect. Yeah. No, there's some women that are just made for it. They're just like geniuses. Like they're they're absolutely stone cold geniuses. You know, they're humans are a funny thing, right? I, I'm not again. I'm not talking about that. And I and I and I I would even give just to give the benefit of the doubt. I would say that some women even maybe didn't have a chance because of 
some kind of structure. They couldn't get into the classes they wanted to get into. You know, there's going to be some geniuses who who didn't get in, but but by and large things are things are pretty fair these days. Uh, you know, you, you know, ever since I've been born, uh, ever since I was I was born in 1965, January. I mean, things are women always had a chance. I, I, there was tomboys when I was a kid. I'm sure there was tomboys ever. There was women who studied math. There was there was there was everything that that we talk about today. It all existed back then. Um, and but at the same time, where do the inventions mainly come from? You know, it's usually a woman in a man's world if it's a woman. You know, and and I and I and I, like I said, I dig on those chicks, those those type of, right, awesome. yeah, those kind of those kind of women. I, I really do because I, I and I'm not saying that just to make everybody happy. I mean, I really do. I like I I um I love genius. You know what I mean? Like I don't really respect hard work that much. Like I'm not one of these guys. Like every really? yeah yeah. It, everybody always says the same thing. Like I hate when people say fucking things just to make everybody happy, or they without even thinking about them. Okay. Like they say, "Oh, I respect hard work," and I'm like, I, I'm not into hard work. I don't respect hard work. I I respect genius, you know. And I and so like when I see a true genius, like a, a piano player, uh, a singer, uh, you know, some 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 mathematician, uh, somebody uh, Charles Darwin, um, you know, any uh, savant uh, in, in in some field. Uh, a, a wonderful, like a really like gifted football player, you know, a basketball player, you know. I just I love that. That's to me like that's really, that's the shit for me. I I, I really love that. And and I look in myself, for the things that I I really do extraordinary, like I can swim, I can swim like world class. I am a very very fast swimmer, and I probably could have been. I, I actually was asked to be in the Olympic team, not 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 to be in like in the Olympics, but. The, our Olympic coach lived in my building when I was a kid, and they asked me to try out. Really? Yeah, and and I was and I and because she would watch me swim in the pool. We had a we had a pool, and so I, I I look at that and I look at that as like one of my great things, you know. Like I think I have serious talent in swimming, and, and there's a couple of things I have talent in, and and I think that if you bullshit yourself and accept half-ass you know things, you'll never find the things you're great at. You know, like you, you, you probably have something that you're great at, but if you bullshit yourself that everybody gets a medal, kind of attitude, you'll never find it. You know, you know. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I'm against hard work. I think you know, the hard work obviously. Um, sometimes to get to to genius, you you do have to work hard at some certain periods. But but you know what I'm saying, like right? It's like, it's it's that genius, and that's that's the art of the world, man. That's what I love, is when I see fucking beauty you know like I don't really respect like a fake Photoshop picture but like a real beautiful sunset you know like or or or, or like a naturally beautiful beach like I'm always looking for the best I'm yeah. looking for the best that's always a good a good well I, I don't know it probably is shitty attitude I don't know but that's just the way I look at it like honestly I love it I love to find it I love to find what is the the, 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 the guy who discovered the thing first the guy who wrote the first you know like even if it's like something like advertising, the guy who was the genius, who, who the, the first madman. Yeah, like, and then, uh, yeah, exactly. Ogilvy, I read all his books. And, uh, oh, you did. yeah, yeah, David Ogilvy, yeah. They used to have them in the library in this building right here, actually, yeah. They, read, they, they were on top there. Yeah. But uh, now they're moved to the library, they're going to open it in a couple months. But uh, I, um, yeah, and like, uh, you know, the Google, Google guys and things like that, I really respect them. And then just like I said, I respect the, any any women who get into that into a field like that where they're not they're not in something that just doesn't things that don't appeal to me are like social science, church, shit that doesn't have any real there's nothing real to judge you by, right? But either way, let's go back to the book. <laughs> so the never uh, the other thing that I want to ask going back to the book, this is really interesting. It's uh, that you never own your children, and he says that in the book. You can never have kids. You can only father them. And then the woman has control over them. And then if she decides she doesn't want you in a way, then you're out. And yeah, th this is a, I mean, I, as with all these things, I, I really want anybody listening is, is if you're listening just to, to really. Um, is it okay that the screen is off? Sure. Just to really think about it. Like, does this make sense to you? With all these things, you want to judge with your rational okay, have your senses, opinion. right? Yeah, your like, two senses. like think about it. Does this make sense? A kid, guys don't own kids. Like, who owns kids? Okay, let's just look. We're today at the park, we see these women with kids all day. Now, naturally, we see them playing hide and seek. We see them picking flowers. 
we see them pointing at the turtles, we see them feeding the turtles, we see them feeding the birds, we see the mothers and kids running. I didn't see it until now. <laughs> yeah, running with the birds over there and making the birds fly up, you know, uh, in a nice way. You know, they're not trying to hurt the birds. They're just dancing around, right? And, uh, you know, the mothers that are with them grow attached and they grow attached to them. You know, it's, 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 it's a bonding process that mothers have with kids because they spend all day with them. So you're bonded with who you spend time with. Yeah. You know, one of my sayings is like, love the one you're with because you can't really love people you're not with. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like real life just doesn't work that way. That's why you have to spend time with people that matter to you, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and do things that you want to do. And um, so the kids, they spend time with their mother all when they're kids, right? Until they get into elementary school. Right. Then after that, they spend, uh, I guess they get off, let's say they get off at three or four and then until the father comes home. So again, they're with the mother in the morning for breakfast and then later, uh, usually for any kind of, uh, I can hold it for a while if you want. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, then, then like if there's like a, a teacher's meeting, often it's the, the mother that comes along. Um, and uh, when, when the kid is sick, often the mother comes and picks them up. So these are all bonding. You know, it's not like an evil thing. It's not like women are planned it this way. They're spending time with the kid and naturally they're bonding with yeah, them, right? It just happens. Yeah, yeah so the often, like if you think about who do you love more, often you think of your mother. You know, your father you love, but he's like a little farther away, right? He's a little bit distant, right? Whereas your mother's like right there, you know? And that's, that's kind of the way it is. And there, there's, there's natural forces at work, right? You come out of your mother's body, um, you know, that's pretty important. You know, you're, you're with there and then the time together bonding. Um, and then then there's the kind of the more insidious part where human nature, you know, cr power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. Right. Uh, you know, I think it was Shakespeare. Right. So if you look at um, women naturally will train the kids to think what they want them to think, you know. Yeah, it just happens. Right. Yeah. It's just like she can't help it. Right. She can't. She can't be totally balanced about everything, right? Yeah. You know, they'll, she'll be like, oh, you're, you know. So the, the kids will hear her on the phone with the dad and, and they'll take the, 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 the mother's side, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so, so, and then also they can kind of shape the kids what they want them to do. Today we saw, we saw some of the women here t treating the, the men, the boys like kids, like girls, making them pick flowers and walk around with them. I, I don't think that's such a great thing, you know. I don't think uh, training boys like girls I don't think uh, influencing the kids mm -hmm. to think a certain way is not great, yeah. but it's what you see. It's, it's, they, they can't, the opportunity is there. So, so when it comes time to divorce, uh, usually uh, the, the structural society will put the kids in the mother's um, care and mm -hmm. uh, the father will have to pay, right? That's, it's that simple in pretty much every society, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so, you know, if you, people talk about uh, the patriarchy um, and I say to that, uh, what is the most important thing in life, right? Probably the most important thing is health, right? And then it's, you know, family, you know, so kids lose, parents lose their, their, their kids. Uh, that's like the worst thing that can happen. That's like the biggest, you lose your car, it's fine, right? But you lose your kids is terrible, right? You yeah. know, so 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 when they divorce, the, the, they lose the kid, and uh, mentally they lost the kid back when they're uh, raising them. Really, you know, like when I if I have a kid, I, I definitely want to spend this key time with them when they're growing, when they're chasing birds and stuff like that. I want to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to be at work. I don't want to miss that that time. That's some of the most precious time uh, there is. I, I've done that with my nieces, and it's absolutely awesome. You know. It's not uh, worth. It's pretty cool when you can yeah. do it with family members and not with you, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that's so the thing. You outsource. Yeah, you can always you can always get a lot of the feelings. Like, if you're the type of person who really likes kids, like me, you can actually enjoy life and you can get the happiness and things you want without necessarily having to own things. You know, like I said this a lot, but I I don't own a tree, right? I don't own grass, you know. But I love grass and I love trees, and I love lakes and oceans, and I. I go visit them. I go to the park. I go to the ocean, and uh, I can enjoy them even though I don't own them. And uh, kids also, you know, my friends have kids. 
everybody likes to have a cool uncle, you know, and that's me. I'm there. I'm always there. I'm, I'm there to teach those kids how to climb trees and swim. And I don't know how many kids I've taught to swim fast, you know, because I know how to swim fast. Oh, so shit. I teach kids how to go down deep in the ocean and, you know, without even like holding their breath and surf and, you know, uh, do all kinds of rough and tumble things. And also I love, you know, playing playing any kind of game kids want to play really <laughs> but 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 in other words you don't have to own a kid you know to, to, to enjoy kids and in fact as a guy you can't own a kid so society's got against you the way you can fight against that is you can realize that a lot of people have free time they want their kids taken care of and you can you know help your friends you can you can do things you can volunteer you can do different things that will be very valuable to people that actually uh, you know, or raising kids. So there's a way around that one. But no, you don't own your kids as a guy. No way. They can be taken away from you anytime. Yeah, and then they raise them with their own uh, agenda, right? So they, they just naturally happen to spend time with the kids. So imagine that. So the father is at work and the woman is with the kid at the park and then they just get, they learn. So the, the kids, they learn from the mom how to think about the world, how to treat other girls especially. I would imagine they just treat them in another way so our basic point of view about uh, women men how to treat them and stuff like that were actually given to us uh, most likely by women not by men and that creates that is kind of interesting because women inherently by default they prefer other women so they would rather teach their sons to treat women in a certain way um, so they're biased so in a way what I'm trying to say I'm just putting my thoughts out there but it just looks like we, I think a lot of people need to question their basic beliefs and understand that the big point of view of the world was, was by a woman. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm only saying that it's one-sided. So if, as a kid, someone doesn't like their dad, maybe it's because they didn't spend that much time with their dad. Maybe their dad wasn't that bad person. Maybe their, their mom said something or they tried to influence them in a way. And then they started to not like the dad as much. Or classic example, if they divorce, then suddenly the kids side with the mom because she says something bad about the dad or anything like that or nobody really knows right and the kids are too young the kids don't know they just don't see their dad their dad in in a way is a little bit like you mentioned that before is a way in, is a stranger in some way because he doesn't really know what's going on uh in the kid's life he just sees them after he comes back from work and he's tired and maybe he doesn't want to spend time with them maybe he has a bad day had a bad day at work um, but the mom gets to influence the majority gets the majority part of influencing the kid yeah so you know it's uh, I guess it, a lot of it is just accepting reality accept that you don't own kids make the best of it um, but never forget it never forget yeah. it they can be taken away from you at any time I've seen it a million times with guys oh yeah really oh yeah can you share oh. a story or like I've heard so many things I mean I mean for me I can tell a story I don't want to give away who it is though but I had a very good relationship with some kids and I had a bit of a spat with the mother, one of the, the, the mother, and, and I had been like a good, uh, you know, helper to the kids, you know, been around them for a long time. Mm -hmm. And when I had a spat with the mother, uh, that was it. That was it. I never got to see those kids again, wow. you know? And it was like, you know, I mean, I really felt so sad. I, I really like, I missed those kids, you know? You just took them away. Just, just, yeah, just, just, you don't, it doesn't even have to be a father, you know? It's like, I was just like a friend and long story and uh, okay. I got very close to the kids, you know, and then when, 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 when she just like, she knew that and then it was like, take me away. And then that, that was pretty, pretty painful for me, actually, believe it or not. That was quite painful. And it wasn't even your kids. It wasn't even my kids. <laughs> you know, that was the other lesson I had is that as an uncle, because I'm often an uncle to different kids and like, it's something else to enjoy, but it's again, it's not your kids. It's never your kids. Even if you're the father. In a even way. if you're a father, even if you're the father, there's very, it's limited. It's limited. It's more than the uncle, no question about it, but it can be taken away. So if you own a car, but I can take your car away, is it your car? It's an interesting question. You know? It's my car under your permission. Yeah. And, 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 and also it's, it's temporary because the odds are pretty high because if you look at divorce, it's over 50%. So... Yeah, it's over 50%. Yeah, so it's something like that. It's really high. So whatever the numbers are, it's very high odds. Vegas, I think they pay out like 97% of the money. You, you give them a dollar, they give you back 97 cents, right? Marriage gives you about half back, right? So it's much worse than Vegas odds. 
and you know in Vegas you end up with nothing, right? So marriage is... They give back 97. Yeah. Yeah, they actually they actually promote the, the numbers. They'll tell you what they give oh, out. Okay. And the new, I know the new online gaming, like the Bitcoin ones, they give like 98, 99. Really? Because they don't have any transaction fees. Yeah, it's very high. So it's, it's interesting. One of my friends has a Bitcoin gambling company, so I got to see. Oh. Uh, I learned a lot about that. But, but no, you know, it's like... Uh, a low percentage means you're basically you have to be ready to walk away you know so so as, as as a man it's really the question is do you want to do you want to spend your life raising someone else's kid what 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 do you really want out of life you know what what do you you know for me i like i like freedom i like travel i like yeah. you know like i know that i'm weak you know i think for us it's a I think for a guy, it's also a lot of unlearning. Like, uh, so, so we've grown to believe that we want family and kids, but many times I think, especially in my case as a young guy, you realize that those things aren't your dreams, at least not so far, not maybe in the future. But for example, I never daydream about having a kid, like never, ever. Maybe I'll change in the future, but what I'm trying to say is, I'm not, I'm not anti-kids or anything like that. What I'm just trying to say is, realize that many of those dreams, many of your ambitions, Many of your definitions of success aren't your definitions. For example, I struggle because I associate money with success. And that, that has some truth to it. But is that definition really mine? Was it given to me by society? Is it something that I got? Really, really question yourself. Question your beliefs. And, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Especially oh, about kids. Oh, totally. Like, like one, one good example is like when I, when I, was, uh, I was in Tokyo last, I was just kind of like walking down the street and I was like looking at ads. I was looking at, you know, like, what, what were they advertising to me? What were they selling me, right? What were the ads selling me? And then uh, any bank that you walk by, there was a picture of a young wife. Usually she looked like she's about 30, you know, and there's two little kids, one boy, one girl. And uh, they're going into the bank and they're, they're dressed up pretty nice, uh, almost like, uh, you know, the image of the uh, royal family. Like a mini royal family is what we're being sold. Mm -hmm. Like that's what we're going to get. We're going to get these kids you know uh, maybe not in tuxedos or anything but you know what i'm saying like that's kind of a if you look at the average ad for families that's kind of what you're promoted that you're going to get you know it's like this kind of like if you look at the charles prince charles and his kids when they're little you know mm -hmm. and the way they're dressed and the way the whole thing is very formal and the, the wife looks good and everybody's looking at them you know it's just a it's a scaled down version of that is what you were promoted right mm -hmm. it's like that's what we want but you know for me i like uh what we were saying earlier you know, I, I, I like a, like a blowjob in the bathroom oh, of a, yeah, of a club, so you know, <laughs> like if I had a choice of like a wife or like an exciting, you know, something out, you know, on the town with somebody I don't know, you know, I think, I think um, like we get so far away from what we want and we think what we want is not, is not um, acceptable. Like basically what I just said is like, oh no, no, he wants sex in a club with some girl he doesn't hardly know you know it's like as if that's some evil guy i mean every guy wants that right mm -hmm. that's that's what turns guys on it's like this fresh new person you don't know mm -hmm. excitement you know mm -hmm. i mean it probably turns on girls too right it's yeah. like but that, but like i that's that that kind of stuff is more exciting for me than than a 30 year old wife and a couple of kids you know to be honest i uh, and i've said it before if i do if if if, if uh if a girl does get pregnant, I'm not, I'm not so big on abortion. So I, I could see myself being in that position. I luckily I've been able to avoid it, uh, uh, until now, but I mean, like, that's not my dream. You know, that's not my dream. No way. Mm -hmm. My dream is to keep building businesses and keep doing cool things and keep like plumbing the depths of my mind and understanding the yeah, reality. The freedom, yeah. yeah. Well, just, just the freedom to, the freedom to learn and the freedom to grow like this podcast itself is a new a new venture for me and it's something that I've thought about since 1992 I wrote a book I wrote a book in 1992 about this oh, uh, the one you told me about yeah that. I wrote a book and I never published it because I was too I, I I was like this was too radical back then you know oh, how many pages uh, I have to go back and I think it's probably 120 Wow like yeah. an actual book yeah it's just like it's just a bunch of stories and it's and and uh, I might I, I'm thinking about publishing it now uh, yeah, just do it under the, the, like a pen name or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, do it under Roning Man. Okay, cool. Badass. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and and so you know, it's it's something that I've thought about for a long time. But I, I, I guess before the internet and and like, 
the ability to be anonymous. And also, I, I think that audio really helps people to understand what you're saying, you know, to really get what you're really saying, you know. When you write words on the paper, it's not as easy to understand, you know. So I, I really like the audio format, right? Back then, you had no choice of anonymous audio format for normal guys, you know. Mm -hmm. but, but today, we have the ability to deliver these things. So because I'm still single and I, I have the chance to, to do this, I'm doing this something that is kind of a dream for me, really. That I've been a MGTOW since, since, since 1992. That's guaranteed. Jesus, you know? so long. And it's been awesome. I've learned so many things, and I want to just share those things with people. Yeah. You know, it's, that, that, that's definitely, definitely crazy. Wow. I'm, I'm really surprised by that. Imagine, like, if you had published that book, how many people would have been exposed to it? Yeah. I know, I know, I know. Looking back, it's sad. I wrote the freaking book. It's sitting on my computer somewhere. Still, I still have it. Okay. You know, it's like it's. Uh, I think it's like text format or something. <laughs> you know, like the most basic before Word, you know. It's, I think it was like some other word processor, and then I switched it over to Word text. Oh, uh -huh, okay. It was some, some like, or, like ancient operating system. <laughs> it was way before Windows 95, right? Oh, you know? wow. Yeah. Before Windows existed, right? Wow. Probably DOS. Uh, probably DOS. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. I Jesus bet I wrote it in Christ. DOS, actually. Jesus Christ. Let me see if there was anything... Oh, it's just like um, the last note that I have is just that women don't work like in the stereotypical sense. Like you have women today that work, but you also have a lot that don't work as much. And it's kind of an interesting pill to swallow. Like we were getting food before and you see, you know, like the normal side of just like a guy and a girl going to get food and then the guy paying, right? And he's just expected that the guy has to pay and then the girl sort of stays at home and then raises the kids and doesn't do much, pretty much. Sometimes it's wrong. Sometimes women work. But on average, it looks like the, the women uh, are expected not to work once they get married. And I feel like that's a big reason for them to get married as well. And in the book, he says that kids, I think, was it this one or the manipulated men? He says that the kids are a great excuse for her not to work because now she has to take care of the kids so she cannot go to work. And that's a big excuse that women use. Uh, so that was kind of interesting. What, what's your thoughts on that, Rolling Man? Uh, well, you know... It's, it's, it's obviously a sensitive topic, right? It's obviously like, it's, it's obviously complex and sensitive and, uh, you know, rife with contradictions, right? It's, it's, there definitely are plenty of, uh, you know, like there's significant women who work and there are slouching guys who just live off the government, you know, and smoke weed. You know, mm -hmm. there's definitely uh, that situation. But it is pretty common in my life that the husband works and the wife sits at home. So I can only talk about things I've seen in the 52 years I've been alive, you know. Is it almost always it's the man working, it's the woman either working part-time when she wants to or, uh, or when it's really necessary or, um, you know, not at all, right? So I think this is one of these things that you just have to open your eyes. Just look at all your friends. Don't look at the TV. Don't look at the movies. Look at the people in your neighborhood you know and then just say what's true what what is true like mm -hmm. anymore like like it's one thing it's nice to make a movie that makes girls feel really empowered and i think that actually over long term might influence girls a lot to be more ambitious you know with work but if you just look around the world today uh you'll see that uh, a lot of women don't and they're home taking care of kids and you know what can you say it's just, it's just like that was my parents that was my friend's parents that was you know a very common thing you know and uh, and again that's it's not a bad thing if somebody has to take care of the kids and and the women do but as a man you really have to think like do i want to spend all day working and then uh almost like somebody else has all the fun you know you know like i i personally i just don't uh you know I'm not into that. I don't. I don't see that as a. Uh, I don't see that as an option that I really am pr pursuing. Right? You know, I, I like. I like smart women, uh, who either are creative and make things and make money, or have already been successful because they have a company or something like that. You know, but the, the 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 housewife model, the problem with housewives is the same with house husbands, is that you're not motivated to improve yourself that much. You know. Mm. You just kind of sit around the house, and it can happen to guys too. It can definitely happen to guys. One of my one of my friends from a college is like that. Um, hasn't had a job. He's been a house husband. Um, 
you know, and it, it just like it doesn't motivate you. I, I see him watching TV, you know, a lot, and and he's quite overweight, and he's not. I don't see him, you know, starting any Silicon Valley companies, or inventing, uh, you know, a uh, a new fusion reactor too often, nuclear fusion. You know, I don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like maybe he'll talk about a TV show or he'll, yeah. you know, post something. You know, yeah. and that's the problem with sitting around all day. It's it's difficult to to get motivated to do things and you don't have anything that is motivating you to do it. And in life, you just need to, you need to put yourself in a situation where you have to improve, you know, otherwise you're not going to improve. That's what evolution is. If, if, if you make your life too easy, you're not going to do anything. You know, I know I used to have a job uh, as a, I was a college professor at one period and uh, it was a great job. It was super easy. Most of the students were girls. It was awesome. I loved it. I was voted teacher of the year. It was totally yeah. great. But I quit because I realized, and this is the truth, I realized that if I stayed in this job, because the teachers, the students would give me a lot of respect. And I remember one year, it was the beginning of the year, I did it for like two or three years. And one of the, I think it was three. Uh, yeah, three years. And one of the students came up to me and said, oh, I respect you so much. And, I, and they were new, they were my new student. And that was when I decided to quit. Because I, cause it's one thing if I, if I teach the students all year and then they respect me. But if a teacher, if a student respects me the first day I'm there, I haven't done anything. Like I know that I'm gonna, I'm gonna start slacking. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm just the same as a housewife. If I put myself in that situation, mm -hmm. I, I, I can slack too, right? But I, I put myself in the fire where I have to improve all the time in my life. I have to compete. I don't wanna be in a situation where it's too easy. You know, that's why I lived in, in, in big cities instead of in the countryside where it's easier to meet girls. Like, I like being comp having to compete with other guys. I like to having to compete with the world. I like to having to compete for, 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 for money, you know, because that's what makes me better. That's what makes me improve, you know. But the housewife situation is really not, you know, it's not competitive. You have total control, you know. You're like the master. You're just like almost like, a, yeah, you own the place, right? You know, you, you own the house. Yeah, it's your, it's, your, it's your home court, right? No one else can even come in unless you don't let them in, you know. It's, it's a, it's a setup for being lazy, really, and for not improving yourself. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I'm not sure what I want to talk on from here. Do you have any more ideas? I think that was like, those things are really worth thinking about. <laughs> Shit. I, I think to, to just, to, just to, go through, to go through and read uh, The Predatory Female and to take notes and, I, and, and, and to put your favorite quotes in the bottom and if you have in, in the comment section and if you have ideas for new, if we missed... If we missed some key points here in these two podcasts about this book, this is a very, very important book. So we're just trying to give you kind of a motivating you to read it and to think about it from different aspects. I want you to read the book. I want to hear what you think. I want to learn from you too. You know, what did you learn? What did you see? What did you see in there? There's a heck of a lot of wisdom in that book and there's a lot of humor too. So it's yeah, it's funny. It's yeah, I yeah. got four and a half pages of notes, by the way. I got like a lot of notes from that book. Oh, wow. Okay, it's on my phone. I can show you later. We should put it on the comment section. We could. Yeah, yeah we let's could. put it on there so everybody can see your yeah, notes. Yeah, we could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you have notes, go ahead and put them, put them down there. And uh, let's figure this thing out because you have no defense without any wisdom, without any wisdom from other guys. You are uh, like the sitting duck. You are the sheep and she is the wolf when it comes to relationships, you know? Yeah, that's worth And it. when it comes to kids, mm -hmm. it's like you are the weak one and you have to know that. And it's okay. Yeah, it's a tough pill to swallow. But yeah, they just they're just more into that, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for listening. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. We're going to do another uh, book review on The Manipulated Man which, by Esther Villar, which is a fantastic book. Uh, and I'm not doing these reviews like, hey, let's do book reviews. You know, now I'm doing book reviews. No. These are books that changed my life. These are books I've been reading both those books I got in 1992, and I have I read them so many times I wore them out, and I actually hunted down and got a signed copy of the Predatory Female from the actual author, even though it's even though it's anonymous, because I look I was so into the book, you know. So I hope you can get some wisdom too from this book, and and and, and incorporate it into your life. So thanks for listening, and then uh, look forward to uh, the next uh, episode, The Manipulated Man. Yes. Yeah. Hardcore. Damn. This one's hardcore. This one is really hardcore. Stop it? Uh, let's see. I'll get it in there. But you know, this next, uh, the manipulated man. Oh man, you, 
you gotta this one is uh it's 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 um sometimes you might even feel guilty listening to this one like it will just turn your world upside down and 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 also there is a, a few things that are out of date so there's a few things that are that i would say probably not so accurate anymore you know um yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's there's a few things in there that you could say we could toss these by the wayside but uh, in general, this is one of your few manuals for life that will give you the vision that you need to navigate the challenges ahead. And just to get you the basics, right? Just to get the basics. You know, these gave me the basics. I, and, and then I could go on and figure the rest out on my own with my friends and the specifics out, which we'll uh, talk about too. So there you are. Thanks very much for listening. Subscribe to the channel and uh, hit that little red button there and share it with your friends. I appreciate it uh, very much. Thanks for listening.